now recognize the chair of the full Commerce Committee, Senator Cantwell, for an opening statement. Thank you, Chair Sinema. Thanks for chairing this important hearing along with your colleague, Ranking Member Cruz, and the important witnesses that we're having today. I also want to thank you. You mentioned the Chips and Science Act and want to thank you for your help and leadership in the final days of our negotiations and getting that done. Today we're here to hear from a set of witnesses to talk about the current issues of aviation and the fact that an FAA bill is due for reauthorization next year. Uh, this is an opportunity to talk about the prospects of that and what needs to be addressed. Today's hearing will specifically examine how Congress can help advance aerospace safety and innovation and what we need to do for the future, whether that is drones to new air mobility concepts. So I look forward to hearing from all of the witnesses. I'm especially happy to hear from Gregory Davis, President and CEO of Eviation. I want to congratulate Eviation on yesterday's first flight of Alice, the first time an all-electric consumer aircraft built from the ground up took flight. I wish we had time to show the video from it because you can hear a lot of cheers at Moses Lake from everybody there for this historic occasion. This groundbreaking aircraft took flight from a 13,000 foot runway at Moses Lake Flight Test Center in the heart of Washington. Along with local partner companies like Magna X and Aerotech, I can see why this project has been so successful. Electric aircraft like Alice built using 95% composite materials represent an inspiring promise of American built innovation and exciting future of sustainable aviation. Locations like Moses Lake show how a combination of public infrastructure and private sector ingenuity create a hotbed for developing next generation aerospace technology. Eviation and advanced air mobility concept provide an opportunity to expand connectivity to regionally and underserved communities and airports. We know that all, I'm sorry, we know that half of all flights in the U.S. are less than 50, I'm sorry, 500 miles in range. So yesterday's successful integration test flights prove the concept that we have sustainable aviation technology and that it can transport people to these short and middle mile regional routes. This significantly can reduce the aviation's industry environmental impacts in terms of carbon emission and noise pollutions, and achieving the technical milestones enables companies like Aviation to focus on commercialization of aircraft like Alice in line with the evolution of battery technology, something that was a very key part of the CHIPS and Science Act. And the FAA certification process will also have to be there to move forward on the all-electric flight if it is to become an industry standard. But for me, I think the CEO has said it best, that these new opportunities for places like Seattle to Walla Walla, or maybe Spokane to, to Missoula, or uh, Moses Lake to uh, uh, parts of Oregon or California, aren't now the kinds of things that would be more economical with these kinds of flights. Electric planes can connect regional communities in ways previously not possible. There are more than 2,000 underutilized airports in the United States and noise restrictions that cover more than 200 airports in the United States alone. So Congress has made significant progress to empower this kind of innovation and dynamics and we need to continue to work to help those opportunities move forward. The 2022 Inflation Reduction Act provided a grant program to develop sustainable aviation fuel and also to incent other types of manufacturing like electric. Because of our success in passing the CHIPS and Science Act, $280 billion is authorized to bolster innovation, create new regional tech hubs, and make historic investments in basic research and translational science. So we know that investing in innovation will help us for tomorrow. Another innovation are the new entrants in aviation 
for example, drones, one of the fastest growing segments of aviation in the United States. Over 860,000 drones have been registered with the FAA. And as of January, over 260,000 remote pilots have been certified. The FAA expects this number of registered drones to grow as high as 2.3 million by 2024. The use case for drones continues to grow well beyond the package delivery to include surveying, infrastructure inspection, precision agriculture, weather monitoring, and even disaster response. The Association for Uncrewed Vehicle Systems International forecasts that between 2015 and 2025, civilian drones will add $82 billion to the U.S. economy, along with 103,000 new high-paying jobs that do require a technical degree. So additionally, U.S.-based manufacturers are busy designing and building electric aircraft with vertical takeoff and landing capability. This, these operations can take off like a helicopter, my colleagues before me have mentioned this, and then fly to a fixed wing airplane. According to Deloitte, the AAM market in the United States is estimated to reach 115 billion by 2035, 0.5% of the country's current GDP, and create more than 280,000 paying jobs by 2035. Importantly, AAM and alternative propulsion technologies are environmentally friendly and have and a must have for the industry's future. Aviation contributes 12.5% of US transportation emissions and accounts for 3% of the nation's total greenhouse gas production. So dealing with these issues is going to be vitally important for the future. So I look forward to hearing from my colleagues and thinking about the future of aviation. But as my colleagues have pointed out, it does require strong leadership from the FAA. The bill that Senator Wicker and I passed that we expect and will continue to have oversight over the FAA to get the right policies in place, get the right people in place, and continue to focus on security as well as competitiveness. Security will, security will help us be the leaders in aviation. And I hope that we can talk about how to continue to maintain that as we move forward with the reauthorization. I thank the chair.